Hi, I'm Brandon Davis, field host here at the Best of the West. Thank you for purchasing a Husqvarna scope. Today I'm going to be walking you through the process to do a successful scope mount job. And then later I'm going to take you to the range and we're going to show you how to do a successful data collection to build you a custom RFBC turret. To begin, let's go over a list of supplies that you'll need to successfully mount your scope. You'll need a Husqvarna scope and rifle, a gun vise, a set of 30 millimeter tally rings, a fat wrench by Wheeler Engineering, a number 15 Torx head screwdriver, a lapping bar and lapping compound, and a professional reticle leveling system by Wheeler Engineering. And you will also need cleaning supplies such as carb cleaner, paper towels, and cotton swabs. Okay, now that we've assembled all of our supplies, the first thing we're gonna do is put the gun in the gun vise. Make sure it's secure in the gun vise, good and tight, so when you go to lapping it here in a little bit, it's good and tight and not sliding around. The first thing we like to do is take a little bit of cleaner and clean out the action threads. And with that, I like to use a Q-tip to try to get in there and get deep down inside there and get them good and clean. We're trying to remove any old residue or, or any new residue from a brand new gun. After we get them good and clean, I like to drop in a little drop of oil that's gonna help us tighten those screws down when we go to mount our scope. Okay, now that I've got oil in all four of these action screws, the most important thing that I need to do is take one of the screws, and for this particular action, I'm gonna be using the short screws in front, and I need to count my revolutions for how many of the thread pitch in here and how deep this is. And so what I do is I get that short screw, I turn it counterclockwise until I know that it's engaged the threads and then I turn it clockwise. And for what I'm gonna be counting is this face right here. So it's facing me. So I'm gonna do one revolution, two revolutions, three revolutions, four, five, six, seven, and just a little bit more is where it bottomed out. And why I need to know that is in, if when I put my base on there and I only get, if I get the full seven revolutions or seven and a quarter revolutions, I know my base isn't tight. If I get five and a half, I know that screw is bonding to that action and it's making a tight connection there with the receiver. And that's what we need to know and that's what we need to have happen to have the utmost of accuracy. It also ensures that the bottom of the screws are not coming in contact with the bolt. Well, now that I've got my threads counted on here, I'm gonna grab my bases and I'm gonna attach them. The first thing with this particular rifle and model, you got two different bases. One's the front and one's the back. On this rifle, the front one is curved on the action and the back one is a, it's got a slight curve to it, but it's a little flatter. I'm working on the front, so I'm gonna grab the curved one. Then I'm gonna do that same process. I'm gonna get that hole lined up counterclockwise. There was the pop. I'm gonna use the face of this again, just like we did before. There's one revolution, two revolutions, three revolutions, four, five, and I'm tight. If you remember last time we said we had seven and a quarter revolutions, now I'm only at five revolutions. That means that my screw is actually tight to the action. That's what we need with this base, is we're making that base tight. Repeat that process for all four screws you're gonna be using to mount the bases and rings on. One thing here we like to do too is make sure that both of our rings are facing towards the center. It's a personal preference, but we like to make them aim at each other so that we get the most movement from the scope to center that up the best we can. So now that I've got them snugged up, the first thing that we need to do is set this wrench to 30 inch pounds. It's an adjustable torque wrench and by twisting the bottom, pulling and twisting the bottom, it set me right at 30 inch pounds and that's what we're going to torque these bases to. And we're turning them until they pop. They make a quick snap and that's what we're looking for. I go back and double check. Now 
Now that we got these bases torqued down to 30 inch pounds, we need to check the bolt and make sure that it performs and goes in and out with ease. There's nothing rubbing, none of the screws are too long and down into there. Seems like everything's working great. The next step is going to be to lap the rings. And the first thing I want to show you is what these rings look like before they're lapped. Show you that they're all black painted in here. And then we're going to show you a step-by-step -step process as they're about 50% and then to a final lapping position. Well, the first thing we need to get for lapping this is our 30 millimeter lapping bar and our 220 grit lapping compound. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by applying the 220 grit lapping compound. Now remember, a little bit of this goes a long way. Make sure you got a good even coating on it, remembering not to put any of it in the screw holes. Don't put too much, but make sure you have enough. We got just the perfect amount on the front. And we don't really have enough on the back ring, but we're gonna fix that by adding just a little bit more lapping compound. Now we're gonna grab that 30 millimeter lapping bar. We're gonna put a little bit of lapping compound on it and we're gonna start lapping our rings. First thing we wanna do is give a little sideways motion to kind of spread it out, side to side action. And then we're gonna do some front and back and we're gonna give it kind of a twisting rotation as we do it to make sure it's going even. And I'm gonna check it to make sure we have an even coating on all of our rings. And everything looks pretty good. So, back to lapping. By lapping them, we build a solid platform for that scope to sit in, where there's nothing that will put undue stress on the scope. Now that we're approximately 50% through this lapping process, I'm gonna put the lapping bar down, I'm gonna get some carb cleaner and a paper towel, and I'm gonna go commence to clean this back ring here to see if we have 50% on it so we can show you an example of what 50% looks like. Then we're gonna go back through, lap it again, and show you what it looks like completed. One of the important things is to make sure when you're lap, cleaning out this lapping compound is that you wipe everything away from the screw, screw holes. You don't ever wanna get anything in those screw holes on your rings. It'll cause a lot of problems. All right, now that you can see that we've got about 50% of this back ring lapped, we need to get about 80% on that at least to make good contact with our scope. We've got about 50% of the black anodizing on there and we've taken off about 50%. So the next step is to reapply our lapping compound and go back at it, get dirty again, get aggressive with it, finish it out, and we'll show you the next one. Now that you can see we've got them all cleaned up, we've got about 85% of the anodizing wore off. That's what we're looking for, somewhere between that 80 to 85% range. Um, the lapping did a good job on these and now we're ready to mount a scope. The next step in the process is to level our scopes. And here we like to use the professional reticle leveling system. The first step we're gonna do is take the small level and put it on the rings and level our gun in the gun vise. Now that I have that level, I'm gonna take the second level and I'm gonna wrap it around the barrel. And we're gonna level it to the first level. All right, now that we have these two levels leveled to each other, we're gonna remove the one off the rings. We're gonna take the scope. We're gonna set it in the rings. And we like to slide them forward as far as possible give us the most clearance on our eye relief. We've got good clearance on the barrel with the bell end. Everything looks good. Now we're gonna replace that small level that was on the rings and we're gonna put it on top of the turret to mount the scope level. Now this level and the scope is in line with the level on the bore. They are both centered. Now we're gonna put our rings on Okay. Now I'm going to start tightening these down in a crisscross pattern to make sure that I take everything down evenly. It's very important to put everything stress-free and keep it as even as possible. 
continue to watch your levels to make sure that everything stays level throughout the process. Now we're going to repeat that same process for the rear rings. Now that I have this level to our other level, everything seems to be good. I'm going to adjust our adjustable torque wrench here to 20 inch pounds. That's the setting we like to use on our rings. And I'm going to commence torquing it down in a crossways pattern, crisscrossing back and forth with each one. I like to go over it just a couple times to make sure that everything is good and snug. Now we're going to repeat that same process for the rear rings. There we go. We're good to go. Both are still level. Our scope is level. Now we'll pull it out of the vise and check it, make sure everything looks good. Everything's level, looks good. Now we're going to go to our computer, print out a range card. Then we're going to take it out to the range and see what this thing will do and collect data. Before we head out to the range, we need to have a way to collect that information to build you that custom RFBC turret. To do this, we're going to need to build a range card. Go to HuskamaOptics.com and by clicking on the BC Calculator tab, you'll be able to open a menu where you can select the bullet you're using in your rifle. Today we'll be using a 300 Win Mag with 180 grain Acubond, so we'll need to find that on our list and select it. You'll notice it already puts in the manufacturer's BC of that bullet. And with that, we also need to get the estimated muzzle velocity of your load. You can find that on the side of factory ammunition boxes or in a general reloading manual. Now hit calculate. This will now give you a drop down menu which contains velocity and yardage. Hit print and take that information with you to the range. Keep in mind these numbers are here just as a guide. The actual data we collect at the range is what's going to be used to build you that custom RFBC turret. All right, here we go. First things first, we're at the range. Now we got to fill out the range card. Okay, our elevation is 43, 44. Our temperature is 50.7 degrees, so I'm gonna write 50. Our pressure, we're gonna let the computer calculate that because it takes an average for the elevation and temperature. So I'll just write in a zero. Humidity is 46%. And our far target range is gonna be 850 when we get to that and we don't know our clicks yet. All this information can be found on your smartphone, GPS, or the internet. Now that we got our range card filled out, our chronograph set up, it's time to bore sight our rifle so we can collect our data. Remove the bolt and take the caps off your scope. Look down the barrel of your gun and pick a target downrange about 100, 200 yards. For today's demonstration purposes, we're bore sighting at 200 yards, but keep in mind, the further away that you bore sight your rifle, the more accurate it can be. We've selected a white rock at 200 yards, and we're gonna center that in our bore so that we can adjust our scope to that rock. Now look through your scope. You'll probably have to adjust it so the crosshairs of your reticle line up with the target you have chosen. With both the scope and barrel aimed at the same point, it's time to make sure we're on paper at 200 yards. And while we're doing that, we're gonna use our chronograph to take velocity readings and get an average on our velocity while we're zeroing our gun at 200 yards. This is where the fun begins. All right, I'm gonna record the average of my velocities. It was 31.47. Well, that's a pretty tight group. I'm gonna call that gun zeroed.
Now that we've got our gun zeroed, we just need to zero our stop ring. To do this, I'm going to take the zero stop ring and screw it all the way up until it touches the bottom of the turret. Then I'm going to back it off a quarter turn so we have a little bit of slack and I'm going to tighten it down with the screwdriver. Making sure to align the white line on the zero stop ring with the white line on the tube of your scope, the main tube. Now that's set. All right now we're going to zero out the turret. And right now, 15 clicks is a 200 yard zero. So I'm gonna take my trusty quarter here, loosen up my turret screw. I'm gonna set it back to zero, then re-screw it in using my trusty quarter to tighten it up. There we're set on zero and windage. I'm at five and two thirds MOA. So I'm going to get in here and set it to zero as well. There we go. It's all set to zero, ready to go and collect our long range data. All right, now that we got our 200 yard zero, we're gonna start collecting our mid-range and our long-range data. Our mid-range data is set at 475, our target. So I'm referring to my range card and at 475, it's telling me to dial 17 clicks. So I'm gonna go ahead and dial 17 clicks and we're gonna let her fly. Well, here's our 475 yard target. You can see that everything's kind of on a horizontal line, but on the vertical, we're only running about a two inch vertical string right there, which is good data. I mean, that's a little less than half an MOA. So that's a good shooting gun. And from the center of the bullseye, what we're gonna do here is we know it was 17 clicks. And from the center of the bullseye to the center of that group, it's three and a quarter inches. So on our sheet, we're going to write plus three and a quarter inches at 17 clicks was our data at 475 yards. Now we're going to go to 850 and start shooting data out there. Well, there we go. The range card called for 50 clicks at 850 yards. This rifle actually shot 45 clicks at 850 yards. The group is a little wide, but it, once again, it's a real tight vertical group. I think it's really good data. The click seems to be putting it right on. It was just gusting back and forth and measuring in my scope, it's about a one minute wide group, which is just the wind changing from a couple miles an hour back and forth, but it's a really good vertical group. We'll go get an actual measurement to the exactly what it was, but 45 clicks instead of the 50, that's the important part of shooting your data and collecting your own data with your gun to build you that custom RFBC turret. Well, here's my group at 850 yards. It's about a little under a 10, 11 inch group, a little over one MOA, but that's due to wind. On the vertical wise, that's a pretty dang tight group. It's maybe one inch. But the center of that group to the center of the bullseye that we were aiming at, we're talking about two inches. So on our range card, I'm gonna say 850 yards, 45 clicks, plus two inches. That's what we're gonna write down. I'll call that good data, that's just the wind. Well, now that we've collected all our data at the range, we're back here and we're ready to order our custom RFBC turret. First thing we're gonna do is go to longrangestore.com. Once on longrangestore.com, we're gonna click the optics tab. Then we're gonna go down to where it says popular links and click the RFBC turret tab. 
And it's gonna pull up a picture of the turret, talk about it a little bit. What we're gonna do is click the add to cart. Once on this page, it's gonna give you a choose your options page. Most of this data that we're gonna be entering on to this choose your options page can be found on your range card. Some of the other stuff is to your specifications of how you're gonna want your temperature and altitude built on your custom turret. So we're gonna enter that information now. It's asking for the Huskama serial number, the load description, which was a 300 wind mag, the altitude that I want my turret to be built for. It's asking for the altitude for turret calibration. I want my turret to be an 8,000 foot turret. I want the temperature for my turret to be 40 degrees. The zero range for my rifle is 200 yards. And now we're looking for the manufacturer's BC and on the particular bullet I use today, 180 grain Nosler Acubond, the manufacturer's BC is 0 0.507. The muzzle velocity, looking at my range card, was 3147. The altitude when we collected our data was 4344. The temperature when we collected our data, 50 degrees. Now when we get down to the mid-range clicks and the far-range clicks, we need to format that in there and what we're gonna do is put a yardage on there, backslash clicks, and then plus or minus the inches that you were either high or low on your target when we did this. So. For me, my mid-range target was 475 yards, it was 17 clicks, and I was plus 3.25 inches. Our far range target was 850 yards, I was 45 clicks, plus two inches. Now that we've completed our choose your options page, we're gonna add this to your cart. Now it's gonna bring up your shopping cart and it's gonna show that I have one turret in my shopping cart. And if you have a free custom turret from us, there's a coupon code at the bottom of that. And we need to enter that in the left side of this screen. Other than that, you can select your shipping rates, where you wanna to go to, how you want it shipped. Continue on to your checkout status. Well, it's as easy as that. Thank you again for purchasing a Husqvarna scope. Until next time, I'm Brandon Davis. Aim small, miss small.